And a good morning it is. We have some announcements that need to be made this morning, and I see announcement makers are up here in front ready to make them. So, Patty? Good morning. Friday as I was leaving to go, I had a woman from the Gardens of Northport stop and drop by a flyer, and she wanted me to make sure that our congregation was aware of an activity they're having, and I said, no problem. Then I realized the activity is Wednesday, so there isn't much time to get the word out. Um, they are having a um, fall festival barbecue on Wednesday from 10 until 3. There are different activities that um, go on in different times. They suggest you dress in country theme. They're having fun games, barbecue, and entertainment. So if you've ever been interested in learning a little bit more about the Gardens of Northport, you might want to take an opportunity to check it out. I'll hang the flyer up in Fellowship Hall after worship for you to take a closer look at it if you want. Um, but it's this Wednesday at the Gardens of Northport. Thank you, Patty. Norma. <laughs> they call that hop along Cassidy. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Um, I'm just here to remind you this is the last Sunday that we have an opportunity to sell tickets for the roast pork and it's the medallions, it's the tenderloin of the roast pork, a full course dinner with a theater afterwards, a comedy theater that's going to be gated around, you can bring your children, your grandchildren, um, so it's a big event. Now you know and I know if you went to a dinner theater, you would be paying about $90 between your dinner and your, the theater tickets. Well, here, guess how much it is? Nine bucks. And it's an awesome event coming up. So I strongly suggest you get your tickets today because as of Wednesday, we're shopping and that's the last call. Also, I'm calling, thank you, all my people are coming back, yay! Minix are back, and my she's my t oh look at Ann. I just spotted Ann. <laughs> All my people are coming back for women's fellowship, and we're going to have our soup and sandwiches, and we're getting ready. Already talking about the November rummage sale. I need everybody to go through their jewelry, any other things that you're trying to get rid of, and do your fall cleaning and put it aside for us. Um, so we are in full bloom, girls. Here we go. The season is upon us, and I'm glad everybody's coming back early. And welcome back, Cindy, because she's my right-hand person on this. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you, Norma. Mary. I'm here to talk about the goodies from Publix again. We have nobody signed up for October to pick the goodies up at Publix, uh, the one across from Walmart on Highway 41, at 10 o'clock on Saturday night, and then I need somebody, at, somebody else to take them from here to Children's First uh, Learning Center on Monday morning, the ones that we don't use. So there's a sign-up sheet in the uh, sign-up central out there, or if you have any questions, you can contact me after church. But we need somebody for October, and I always say, and for November, December, January, February, and so on. So if you'd sign up for, you know, more people than for one month would sign up, you wouldn't have to listen to me every month. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Esther. What a wonderful experience I had yesterday. David and Martha Durande, David and Lynn Sanford, and I attended a workshop pre presented by Reverend Michael Piazza. I wish that each one of you could have been there and shared this experience with us. It was exciting, interesting, challenging, stimulating, and exhausting <laughs> in a good way. Michael speaks of progressive renewal. He's currently pastoring a church in Atlanta, Georgia, who had 23 members 
when he arrived just three years ago. Their membership now is over 200. He previously had pastored a church in Dallas that grew into a mega church. I don't even have the figures of that, it's too much. But it was incredible that this man has a lot of answers and we were able to spend five hours with him. How do you give a report of five hours of a five hour day in two minutes? You really don't. However, in order for our church to become the church we are to be, that is, the church we are to be for the community of Northport, we need to find out who we are and what our city needs from us. I noticed in the Herald Tribune that we were one of the most boring cities in the United States. No isn't an answer. We need to experiment with a variety of approaches and evaluate what works for us. Michael shared many ideas and challenged us to do or do not. But there is no try. Either you do it or you don't do it, but you don't try to do it. He also said growing a church is simple but not easy. There is change. <clears throat> there is change that we are challenged to do, such as make welcome an active verb. Welcome, an active verb, not just, hi, how are you? Are we willing to change to create the church of the 21st century? <clears throat> and there's a few of us dinosaurs around that are having more trouble changing than other people seem to. They'll get there, we know. What a challenge. <clears throat> I hope you will join us in this venture. If there is someone who is good at navigating Facebook, we are in need of some expertise for our church Facebook page, because media is the way, whether you like it or not. If there, is, if there is someone who can help out the church, please see David Sanford. Oh, raise your hand, David. Yeah, David Sanford, our moderator. One of the things that Michael said, he said, when you go to church, before you silence your mobile phone, you take it and you check in, and then the world knows that Northport Community United Church of Christ has a lot of people there today. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. That sounds exciting. Allie, are you here for an announcement? What's that? Sunday school is today. Yes, yes. Immediately following the children's time, our Sunday school is now in session. Are there any other announcements? Very well. Then let me give you the official welcome to our worship service this morning at the Northport Community United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. If you haven't already begun the friendship pads that you'll find on the ends of the pews on the center aisle, the little red book, please take that now and open it and sign your name to it. Uh, and everybody signs this, goes all the way to the end of your row. If you are visiting us for the first time, we like you to give us your home address. And if you live here in the Northport vicinity, we're also pleased if you will give us a telephone number and or an email address so we can get back to you. Keep the book open, pass it back to the center aisle, and look and see who else you're sitting with this morning, and be sure to greet each other uh, before you leave this room, and you all are invited over to the right next, on the other side of these accordion doors to the social hall where we continue our fellowship. This is a church where it should be obvious that kids are welcome. If you have a cell phone, after you have checked in that you're here, that's a neat idea, but we're not really ready to do that yet, but we're going to get there? We'll get there, yeah. Uh, turn your cell phone sound off or and, or and put it on vibrate or just simply turn it off. Um, and leave it quiet throughout the worship service. Norm has already told you that this is your last chance to get tickets for the roast pork tenderloin dinner. Several of you who are attending very regularly are not yet members of the church. 
And if you have an interest in becoming members while I am still here, which is just now about another month, uh, you have, will have an opportunity to do that. Next Sunday, immediately following the worship service, we're going to hold an inquirers group for those of you who might be interested in becoming members to get information about the church, help you make that decision. And we're going to hold that meeting over in the other building at Deckard Hall immediately following the worship service. Adult Sunday school classes meet each Sunday at 845 in that same building in Decker Hall. This week, the Turning Point Youth Group meets tonight at 630. Choir rehearsal is Wednesday at 7. And you hopefully know about the roast pork dinner Friday at 6 o'clock. Let us be in worship. I invite you to all stand for our singing call to worship, and Michael, I'm going to ask you to play it through completely once.
are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God. We believe in God. We are not alone. We are not alone. Come to us, God, in the midst of our busy lives. Take us by the hand so that we not only know your presence, but also feel your affirming power and hear your word. Help us to take hold of that power which you offer through Jesus Christ, so that as we live our lives, we might receive blessings from you. Amen. Gospel reading today comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. And when he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, because no one has hired us. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the, first, so the last will be first and the first will be last. Come on, get close and be friendly. That's a way. Good to see you all here this morning. It's not fair. It's not fair. Any of you ever say that? Hmm? Sometimes if, if, if a brother or a sister got to do something that you didn't get to do and you thought you should be able to get to do it, have you ever said, that's not fair? Or mom and dad makes you go to bed at your regular bedtime, but there's going to be something on TV that you want to see, or you haven't finished your game yet, and you want to finish it, and you're right on the verge of really getting it done, and you say, nope, off to bed. And you say, it's not fair. I want you to think for a moment. It's not fair if. Anything come to mind? No. 
You don't have any problems with that, Daniel. Nothing happens to you that's not fair. <laughs> Somebody gets to go over to a friend's house and you don't. That's not fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, usually something we think is not fair is we think that we ought to be able to have something get something that somebody else gets, yeah, and it's just not fair that they get it and we don't get it. Well, in our story this morning, there's a landowner who hires some people to work for him, and the first people he hired, he hired at 9 o'clock in the morning. Any of you get up at 9 o'clock in the morning? Earlier than that, even. So that was how early it was. And then... He didn't have enough people working for him, and so he went out at noon, and he hired some more workers. And he still didn't have enough people to work for him, so he went out at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, which is about the time you were getting home from school, and he hired some more to come work for him. And he still didn't have enough, and so he went out at 5 o'clock when it's almost dinner time and hired some more, and they came, and they only worked for a short time, and the work was done, and so then he called them all in, and he paid them, and he all paid them the same amount of money. Do you know what the ones that were hired earlier in the morning said? It's not fair. We came at 9 o'clock in the morning. Some of them didn't get here until later than that, and some of them just got here before quitting time, and you paid them all the same. It's not fair. And he said, can't I give them what I want to give, and didn't I give you what I agreed to give to you? And Jesus said, and that's the way the kingdom of God is. And it raises a question. Is God fair? Think so? Well, I'll let you think about that, but I'll tell you what God is. God is love. And sometimes love may be more than fair. If we only got what we deserved, sometimes we'd come out on the short end and we wouldn't get love and forgiveness, but God loves us and forgives us beyond what we deserve. And that's the really good news today. No matter what, God still loves us. Thank God. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for your love which knows no bounds, that loves us in spite of all things, even beyond what we deserve. It is Jesus that teaches us this, and we are so glad. We pray this in his name. Amen. Okay, we're going to sing a new song today before you go to Sunday school, and it's Jesus Loves the little children. And you're going to play it through for us, Michael, so that we make sure we all remember how it goes. And there's the words. You ready? Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and blue, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. You can go to Sunday school and have a good day. Oh, you get your bullets. Take them along. Thank you, Daniel.
Thank you, Esther. The Psalter reading is Psalm 145, verses 1 through 8. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall laud your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed, and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. When the elderly minister asked the young couple sitting before him what type of wedding they would like, traditional or contemporary, they answered, contemporary. Somewhat surprised that this elder minister would even have something considered a contemporary wedding. When the day of the wedding arrived, the groom, arriving later than he had planned, found that the only available parking place left was out in a grassy area beyond the paved parking area of the church. It was across the road from this little country church. And because there had been a rain earlier in the day, the grass was wet. 
And so he rolled up his pant legs and walked out of the field, avoiding getting his tuxedo pant legs wet. And then, forgetting that he had done that, he walked into the church and stood before the congregation waiting for his bride to come down the aisle. The minister, noting that his trousers were rolled up, said in a dignified but loud whisper to the groom, pull your pants down, to which the groom replied, could we have the traditional wedding? (laughs) Now that story has absolutely nothing to do with this morning's sermon, Except this, it has a surprise ending, a twist on the end, and that's what grabs our attention. In our scripture reading this morning from Matthew, Jesus grabs our attention with a surprise ending. The workers show up at different times of the day. Some worked from very early to very late. Some came at the very last and worked only a short time, but all were paid the same wage regardless. We hear this story and say to ourselves, what? It's not fair. Yes. I remember discussing this story with people at a Bible study and asking what they thought the point was, and one of the participants said, the point is, God isn't fair. And that's right. Lest you think that person missed the point, the point is, God isn't fair. And how do we deal with that? And in all honesty, not very well. It goes against our sense of fairness, our sense of fair play, our sense of we all get what we deserve. This is not one of our favorite Bible stories, I imagine. We prefer the story of the talents, which tells us that people get back based on what they put in. That story makes an employer's and a banker's heart feel really good. But this story doesn't make sense to us. It doesn't fit our perception of how life is supposed to be. So what is the point? Well, I think the point is exactly what the person said. God isn't fair. The Christian faith is not about fairness. If you think it is, or ought to be, then you haven't been paying attention the last several weeks. Jesus has been teaching about forgiveness, about grace, about love. And there is nothing fair about any of them. You see, fairness is based upon what we did to earn what we have coming to us. The workers went to work to earn a wage. Those who worked all day, or the better part of the day, wanted what they rightfully had coming. But the employer was operating on the basis of grace. You get what you don't deserve. Can you imagine if we only got what we deserved in life? That there was no grace, no forgiveness? No unearned love. Unfortunately, some of us can imagine that because we will not allow ourselves to receive grace. If we can't earn it, then we don't want it. It can't really be good. There was an investment commercial on TV several years ago. They got right to the heart of our sense of fairness. It had that guy who looked like Alfred Hitchcock. I think it was for Smith Barney, but I'm not sure. But he would say, we make money the old-fashioned way. 
we earn it. Well, we think the same way about God's grace and love. We think people really ought to earn it, to deserve it. Here's another story. On the first day of class, a professor says, now students, I have a complex math problem for you to solve, and the correct answer will be your entire grade for the semester. I'm going ahead and give you the problem now so you can begin working on it immediately, and I do urge you to get going on it if you hope to pass this course. There's only one passing grade, and that's an A for the right answer. Okay, you're one of the students, and you want to do well. So you get the problem, and you go to work on it right away. You're surprised that there are several students who are, quite frankly, procrastinating. While you are working diligently, they're out partying. Well, that's their problem, not yours. If they want to flunk, that's their business. You work hard on finding the solution, and by golly, you get it done by the end of the semester. It was difficult, but you have the satisfaction of getting it solved, and you will be one of the few who will get an A. But to your surprise, Everyone got an A. They all had the right answer. How can that be? Well, you listen and you learn how. You hear some students say, thanks, Professor Smith, for your help. Thanks for showing me how to solve the problem. Without your help, I'd never gotten it done. Well, what's going on here? While you were hard at work, these students were goofing off, and then the professor was all over the campus helping them. So you go to the professor, and you tell her this wasn't fair. She says, you're saying that I shouldn't be able to help my students who need special help? I told you that the goal of this class was to finish the problem with the correct answer. You were able to do it on your own, and that's wonderful. Some of the others needed special attention. You got your A. That's what I promised you. They each got their A's. What's wrong with that? Did I not give you what I said I would? Is this not the agreement at the beginning of the semester? Well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was the deal, but there's something wrong with it. It's, well, it's just not fair. No, it's not fair. It's grace. And they are not the same. To be a Christian and understand God's love and grace is to have a different perspective from that of our pervasive culture. An educational consultant was called on to go out west to a school on a reservation. And one of the teachers there was shocked and frustrated by the lack of morals among the Native American children. They cheat constantly, she said. They can't, we can't make them stop. So the consultant went and gathered a group of children and interviewed them and asked them why it was that they all looked at each other's papers during the tests. And they told him, if someone in the tribe knows something, he should tell everyone who doesn't know it. If someone in the tribe does not know something, he should go and ask someone who knows. The consultant realized that he was in a culture with a different perspective than his own. 
what we have been taught to call cheating, they called cooperation. Which perspective is healthier? It depends on how you look at it. To be a Christian is in part to be reminded by the teachings of Jesus that we are meant to look at the world with different standards of judgment than those that operate the world. We are people of love and compassion, not necessarily fairness and merit. Parents love their children, not because the children have earned their love, but because they are their children. God loves us at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day, all the same simply because we're all God's children. If we come to this, er this realization early or late, it makes no difference. The love we receive is all the same. The only difference is the length of time we have had the joy of receiving God's love. Be thankful that love is not fair and we don't get what we deserve. Jesus invites us to receive God's lavish love and then pass it on to others who don't deserve it either. Let us pray. Our merciful and gracious God, we thank you for your love that comes to us no matter who we are, where we are in this life, in this journey, that you love us and receive us no matter what. And we pray that we may participate in the fullness of this love in such way that we can show it and live it with others. We pray this in the name of the one who is the greatest lover the world has ever known, Jesus the Christ. Amen.
This is our time of fellowship when we share our celebrations and concerns. And I want to begin the celebrations. There is a pew here that is filled from people from the Venice United Church of Christ who are here on an inspection. <laughs> they want to see if I'm really fit and ready to return to the Venice Church. <laughs> We're very glad to have you all here this morning. Other celebrations? CJ. Wow, okay. Uh, if he thinks he had a tough job before, just wait till he gets into this one. Yeah. <laughs> Other celebrations? Barbara. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Other celebrations? Okay. Let us move on to our concerns. As you're thinking about yours, I do want to update you that uh, John Leanhoff is uh, at hospice uh, in the, the one in plantation. Uh, he's resting very well, he's not in pain. Uh, when we were there to see him on Friday, he's still very able to talk. Uh, and he, he and Barbara, the family, uh, need to be in our prayers. Norma. Oh. Okay, so Geneva Morris had a fall at home, and we, she needs to be in our prayers. Barbara? Okay, Barbara's son is going to have hip replacement surgery. Cindy, by the way, we celebrate that. Oh, Cindy and Doug are back. <laughs> Oh dear. And the family just 
us when we talk about not fear. The family just keeps praying to God that even though the doctors say there's nothing more, that God will be able to take him more. Okay. Oh, so sad. It's nice to you. Yeah, so sad. So, Joan? Very good. We'll have you in our prayers, Joan. Joan likes to watch football, so this is her season. I know why she watches it. <laughs> Other celebrations or concerns? I'm sorry. Any other concerns? Yes. Okay. Okay. Prayers for Esther's daughter-in-law and her mom and their family. She's in hospice now. Okay. Any others? Let us join our hearts in prayer. Dear God, our lives are such a mixture of wonderful things and trying things and sad things. We bring them all to you, and we know that they are all of concern to you. You bless us with so much in the way of friends and family. We receive your love. We participate in it. We share it with others, and it is so wondrous. But in this, we also feel the sadness for those who are suffering illness, those that are facing death and we will miss. We ask you to be a comfort and a presence with them. And be with those who are undergoing medical issues, people who are undergoing tests and awaiting the results of tests. Be with all people who are struggling for homes, for shelter, for food, people who are searching for the meaning of their lives. We ask, oh God, that you will continue to be with this church as it goes on into the future which you have promised for it. Bless them in this time of waiting with expectation for the arrival of their new pastor. Bless them that they might live with change and boldness as they intend to be of service to this community. We now come to you with the silent prayers that we each bring in our hearts. And as a symbol of our oneness in the body of Christ, let us join together in our unison prayer. O oh God, make known your will and the decisions that face us. Surrounded by such a significant witness, may we not shrink from our commitment to serve. We confess anew that in you alone abides our hope of salvation. With Christ to guide us, we set forth on our tasks in his name. 
Amen. Let us now come with our gifts of gratitude and our pledges of commitment. the Spirit of Christ, we are moved, even was, was Jesus, to compassion and action on behalf of all who are sick or lonely, people who are hungry, and all who are without safe homes. Accept these gifts we offer as symbols of our commitment to Jesus and to his life-serving work in the world. Amen.
God loves you. Be the evidence of that love to all whom you meet. And let others know that God loves them too. Blessings upon us all. Amen. Thank you.